Everybody else forgets to mention. <laughs> <laughs> now, gentlemen, you all have before you a copy of the Williamston Plant Purchase Prospectus. Mr. Jameson, did you attach your supplements? It's right there, Mr. Ramsey. Page uh, 17R, under process equipment. And, uh, Mr. Granigan, the stock purchase plan I outlined, I have your comments here? Uh, you do, Mr. Ramsey. Good. Feasible, is it? Very much so, in my opinion. Good. Well, that about winds it up, unless there are any further points to be made. I do think, Mr. Ramsey, if we could keep the transaction under wraps for a bit, at least during the preliminaries. You know what'll happen to the stock quotations if it leaks out that we've agreed to purchase. I've arranged it this way. The stock quotation as of yesterday morning... You seem to be straining at the leash, Mr. Briggs, or am I mistaken? You mentioned here that probable time of purchase would be sometime in June. Are the plants to be in receivership until then? That seems to be what it says. That means six months with improper maintenance of equipment. Oh, I doubt it, Bill. I've had two of my best men out there for the last six weeks. Oh, we had a varying voltage problem, but that was taken care of. Now, maintenance-wise, I doubt if there'll be a thousand dollars worth of deterioration. How about goodwill? What about it? The plant employs 900 men. That's half the working force of the village. So? So what do we do with these men? Cover them with cosmoline and put them away in a drawer until we get ready to resume production? I thought your concern was for the plant. And what good is the plant without the men? You chop a village payroll in half for six months and you might not have a plant. Because you might not have a village. Mr. Briggs, if we may be permitted to disregard for the moment the considerations that you have brought up, what about the rest of the plan? I'd say it was adequate. Adequate? That gentleman is the kiss of death, believe me. I've known Mr. Briggs for a long time. When he says something is adequate, what he means is that it is entirely inadequate. I must admit to feeling a concern over some 900 men suddenly deprived of a livelihood. Mr. Briggs, if you would do me the goodness to look at what I consider to be a fairly elementary business principle. By putting 900 men out of work temporarily, we may ultimately employ twice that number in the same town. By cutting production costs as a result, we will then be able to compete more favorably in the market. Thus, we'll be able to sell more goods. We're not going to ruin that town, we're going to make it. I should think, Mr. Briggs, that after 30 years, you'd be able to think beyond the tongue-clucking stage and come up with something resembling an analytical point of view. I was under the impression I'd given you a point of view. I saw none! I perceived what amounts to a rather emotional little tidbit that was decidedly more charitable than cooperative and by no means thought through. I asked, I believe, for an objective view of a business venture. From you I got, and I seem constantly to be getting, a very negative response of any at all. Adequate, I believe you said. Well, Mr. Briggs, this little move will save us conservatively half a million dollars, which we'll be able to put back into the business. I must say you take a liberal view of adequacy. I didn't intend to make a central issue out of this, but I did feel it important enough to air in this meeting. Well, you have aired it in this meeting. I think it's a good thing you did. But I think, Bill, we're pretty much of one mind about it now. Then we may assume the matter is closed now. Mr. Briggs. Sit down, friend. Sit down quietly and be a nice, sympathetic friend and associate. I'm wondering if you're as good a human being as you are an industrial relations man. He doesn't like you, does he? No. Bill, has it ever occurred to you to resign? Of course it has. A thousand times. Why don't you? What? Resign. You can't take the chance of letting this man fire you. On our level, you don't get fired. You know that. After 30 years of productive work, they can't say to a man like me, all right, now get out. They just can't do that. So what do they do? They create a situation. A situation you can't work in and finally that you can't live in. Where this tension, abuse, small humiliations, it all starts out on a scale so subtle, so microscopic, First, you can't really believe it's happening at all. But gradually, the thing begins to take shape.
pieces fit together, all the little bits, and it becomes unmistakable. They chip away at your pride, your security, till you begin to have doubts. And then fears. Ramsey. He wants me to resign. He wants me to get my cross so full that I'll be miserable enough to do just that. But you take it. Yes, I take it. Why? The bigger the job, the more desperately you try to hang Why? Out. Why? Why do you take it? Why don't you quit? Quit? Yes, quit. Get out of it. Chuck it. You'd have your pension, your peace of mind. No. You know Ramsey is going to go on hounding you until he makes you quit. Never. You'll never make me quit. Bill, I, I... I wish I could understand why you go on taking it. Because I'm weak, I guess. Because I'm 62 years old and I don't think I could get another job. How does that strike you? How do you think? 